Minnesota's third congressional district race is one of the most closely watched in the country. Yeah, Republican Congressman Eric Paulson has represented the Western Twin Cities Suburban District since 2009, but Democratic challenger Terry Bonoff is running a competitive race in a changing district that political analysts say could flip from red to blue. DFL State Senator Terry Bonoff joins us this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Now, you've said many times one of the biggest reasons you are in this race is to step up <laughs> and stand up to Donald Trump. What do you mean by that? What I mean by that is that the people in our community rejected Donald Trump. They did so at the caucuses, and we have continued to speak out against what he stands for and what he says. So, for example, when Donald Trump talks about spreading nuclear weapons and aligns himself with Putin or calls women fat pigs, Eric Paulson has not had the courage to say, I won't vote for him. That's not somebody who's fit to lead our country. And I think the third district deserves courageous leaders. So, so that's what you want. You want him to say, to, to disavow Donald Trump the way other prominent Republicans exactly. have Exactly. Yes, I think that that it's really a risky game to say, you know, I don't know who I'm going to vote for. I'm not voting for Hillary Clinton, which is actually what he has said. And so I think for the safety of our country and out of um, a sense of putting country before party, that he should say, I'm not well, voting well, for Donald is, Trump. Is it disavow him or say... Just don't uh, vote for him. I don't or <laughs> I support him. Or I support him. Uh, what, what about that? Well, at least, you know, we would know then where he stands. But personally, I do think that Errol, that Eric owes the district um, to let us know where he stands. And I do think that Donald Trump is dangerous. And I think it's important that we uh, make sure that we don't elect him. You know, well, both of you are running negative ads against each other, of course. So this campaign... Well, that's actually not true. Well, it, I, I see so, your ads, and they seem pretty tough. Uh, so, my, so my ad is my step-up ad and my kayak ad. Mm -hmm. And that's all I've paid for. So I... You know, I fair think, enough. The DCCC, the Democrats coming in here running these ads. We have a negative ad campaign going on, even if you say you're not involved in it. But Paulson is accusing you repeatedly of raising taxes over and over again, willing to raise any tax no matter how unpopular. A lot of people are seeing this ad. Let's take a look at that. I'm Eric Paulson, and I approve this message. Terry Bonoff, she turned a $2 billion surplus into a $6 billion deficit. She wasted money, and she raised our taxes. She voted for a new luxury office building for politicians. She gave Minshew bureaucrats bonuses. While our health insurance rates skyrocketed. A billion-dollar tax increase. A billion, with a B. Higher taxes on income. And small businesses. Terry Bonoff voted to tax nursing homes. And seniors got the bill. We can't afford Terry Bonoff. Paulson. This ad is running a lot. <laughs> yeah, this, a lot. Millions of dollars well, on this ad. I, well, what do you say to people when they ask you about this ad? Well, I say what you said, Pat, because I've heard you do the fact check. That ad is filled with misleading statements. It distorts my record and it mischaracterizes me. And that's paid for by Eric Paulson himself. He knowingly mischaracterizes me. And if he would do that to me, how can we trust him to really lead with integrity in Congress? Is he lying in this ad? Well, He's certainly distorting the record. So, for example, he talks about my statement where I say that I have voted repeatedly for unpopular taxes, but what I actually said was, I will vote for unpopular taxes for transportation. That is the one area where I have supported the gas tax the, that you raised, exactly, you voted and, to raise. Right. And I talk about, you know, when the bridge fell, how important it was that we all came together to be able to pass a transportation bill. And I don't think Eric even voted for that. But but and instead, he made it sound like I vote for all the taxes. I've been endorsed by the Minnesota Chamber, the Twin West Chamber, and the NFIB, which is the Small Business sure. Association, in every one of my state elections because I have been a fiscal conservative, and Eric knows that. So he purposefully put together an ad that makes me look like somebody well, I'm not. Well, it's deliberate, it's purposeful, but yeah. it's not a lie? Well, it is. <laughs> it, you know, it depends. Uh, it, it certainly parses words. So, for example, that statement about the office building, I voted against the office building because it was in the tax bill that I voted no. Now, a couple of years later, there was um, some debt payments that were in another bill that I voted so, for. And so um, it's really a mischaracterization. The one, the one that I'm interested in in here is where it says that you voted to turn a surplus into a deficit. <laughs> how, how, do you, how do you unwind that one? 
Yeah, so, I mean, it's really I, I little bit of laughter because how could um, I personally vote to take a surplus into a deficit? What happened is we had the recession. So at one point, we had revenues coming into the state. There was the, the terrible effect of the recession. And yeah, then back we had in 2008 deficits. and 9, right. I'm recalling all so that. So certainly I didn't vote for that. So it is misleading. All right. Uh, Senator Bonoff, let me ask you about the role of women in the third district congressional race. Uh, there has been a lot of focus of, on women at the national level in the presidential race. Uh, and a lot of people think that this election is going to hinge on suburban women voters. To what degree do you think they're going to play a significant role here? I think they will play a significant role, and that's because we have representatives and candidates who are voting not in our interest. So, for example, Eric Paulson is not pro-choice, and worse than that, he's really an activist. He actually was a co-author of the bill to defund Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood provides access to health care for millions of women across our country. And he signed a letter that went to President Obama that called Roe v. Wade a tragedy. I think that women, look at that. I don't, first of all, I don't think they know. And so the other thing that the Trump factor has done is, number one, it's shined a light on his lack of courage, but also on his record, that he votes in a way that's inconsistent with the values and the beliefs of people in our district. And what about the things that Trump has said about women? Do you want Congressman Paulson to respond to that? You know, um, I want Congressman Paulson to be straight with the people about where he stands and where he votes. You know, for example, another issue is I would bring up is the, the issue around gun violence prevention. And the people in our district really want something to be done about this. And so um, I've heard from constituents that they've written him and they've said, pass, no fly, no buy. And he said, I agree with you. And then he goes back and votes again and again and again not to debate that question. Well, so Senator, I'm sorry, we do have to cut you off. But thank you so much for coming in. Uh, we do want to let people know that we have repeatedly asked uh, Eric Paulson to join us on this show, and we hope to have him on soon. And we will be right back. Again, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks.